Okay, so uh, as, as I've been introduced as being sort of somebody that's been at the council for quite a few years now, been focused really on sort of city centre public realm design and really sort of just thinking about it a bit more now, really just thinking, you know, should we be offering something a slightly bit different than just high quality public space and the setting for all that? So I think, I, well, I may not be, but I'm, I'm probably coming at it from a slightly different perspective to, than some of you, where I've not come at it from a particularly SUDS focused aspect. It's about place making, it's about all of those elements really. So if we, um, if we crack on with the, the uh, talk. So it's, it's focused, the, the, the sort of purple area is our uh, Greater Green project area. And it's sort of, it really is in our sort of core city centre space, really. So it's a, it is a civic space in its own right. It's, it's been neglected by the city for quite a few years. It was part of our ring road network. Um, unfortunately, you can't see that well, but in, in sort of 2007, we had our big flood event, really, which really hit the city badly. Hundreds of millions of pounds worth of damage, loss of life. Uh, it was a big turning point, I think, for the city in, in, in the main, really. But so there was that in our minds. There was the fact in 2008 we developed our ring road and pushed it out further still. So that in itself gave us potentially a lot of space to do something with, which we didn't really know what to do with at the time. So really, we had a lot of land. We had a potential flood issue, which was going to come back to us again. So you know, what can we do with these uh, these elements, really? And sort of in 2014, the Greater Green Project area looked well like this. It's it was dual carriageway. Quite a lot of uh, quite large sort of traffic lights everywhere, lots of crossings, lots of central reserve barriers, and pretty well not a nice environment to be within really. It was just a, a neglected space, if you like, sort of cleared up and sorted out, but not a great environment. So really, the city looked at what we needed to do. Number one is always investment for us. Can we attract further investment into these areas? But suds really, you know, could we look at sort of making a meaningful amount of suds elements on this? Sustainable transport, could we get it better connected with the city and, and utilise all of these aspects? But could we bring into it as well? It's not just about the suds for suds sake, if you like, but it's about can we bring in planting and make that environment a much more attractive environment in a very hard built up environment. So, you know, could we bring in the meadow planting um, and all the benefits that you can get from that as well, really? Taking back the highway, bringing ownership back into you know the pedestrians' ownership. These were areas which were pretty much no-go areas for for sort of 30 years, really. Well, they were dual carriageway, and really, could we build on the the city's city garden approach that we've developed over the last 20 odd years as well, and and really sort of think about bringing horticulture into the city. And it's something we've tried to do to be identifiably Sheffield, if you like, as well, is that bringing proper horticulture and horticultural knowledge of maintenance into the city and tried to sort of, you know, turn it on its head almost. Um, the city didn't, didn't have a lot of horticulture, didn't have a lot of trees. It was a city of makers, hard environment, met lots of metal bashing, lots of fine polishing work, no planting. No. So it's really, the last 20 odd years, we've, we've tried to bring that horticultural element into it. And again, that's the Greater Green Project again there, sort of bringing that sort of aspect of the planting into it. Um, we've, the first phase, which is what we're here for, really, is, is the area in the oval section. But we are, at the moment, designing phase two, which, again, is it's even larger than the first phase at the moment. It's all in detailed design, hopefully starting on site in the new year, funding permitted. Um, and then there's other aspects and other phases to go in the future as well. So this is telling people to suck eggs, I suppose, but in principle, it was a completely 100% impermeable site, really. So it was the questions that I asked myself, I suppose, originally was, could we bring horticulture into it? Could we deal with everyday runoff? And could we do deal with storage, potentially, at, at storm event times? And they were the sort of key drivers from the SUDS aspects of it all, really. So looking at the, uh, the SUDS elements, I suppose, really, it's, it's, it's very much a SUDS retrofit scheme. But you know, could we bring water as an asset into the environment and educate people to understand a bit more about not just chucking it down into a drain, you know, can, you know let them think about things a little bit more and understand some of the processes that, uh, that were taking place, really. Um, Future-proofing elements, you know, can we bring other elements of the city into this scheme, plug it in and add to it in the future? And just generally, obviously, it's removing the flow from the combined sewer system, generally, and the outfalls to the river. Um, which you know everybody's happy with, but again, it was really mimicking the natural side of it again and keeping the water on the surface, 
and not really sort of holding well, holding on to it, getting rid of sediments, treating pollutants, and then letting it flow through either to infiltration or to the river as a final destination if required. And it was just really trying to get away from the fact of gullies, drainage pipe systems, traditional stuff, which the city obviously sees as quite a burden to itself in terms of maintenance and things as well. So, you know, it was another string to the bow to the project if we could start to sort of understand a bit more about maintenance as well. So really that's what it sort of looks like, I suppose. Um, that was in its second year, that was really. So it's, um, uh, was it second year? Yeah, sec uh, beginning of the second year, sort of spring, late spring time. Um, so it's a series of cells, con uh, concrete check jams, series of cells which were modelled with a 1 in 30, 1 in 100 and a 1 in 100 plus climate change event um, aspects to it as well just to make sure that everything could be held into the system. Lots of people were nervous, the law courts is all part of this scheme so they were worried that we were going to be flooding their basements out and so on so we needed to prove a number of elements to it but in effect we didn't just trust the luck, we did model the system to make sure that the water did stay where it should be staying. And sort of thinking about the inflows, either off carriageway or from footways, it was on this scheme we've gone for completely no upstand of kerb. So again, reducing the amount of sediment concentration or pollutant concentrations. We've done other schemes where we do do the inlets, but it's um, if you know if if we can, I think we'd much prefer to do something like this because it's just spreading the load, if you like, as well, really. And it creates quite an, a different environment as well for car users, particularly sort of changing their mindset, thinking, oh, my God, where's the, where's the upstand gone? So it's, 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 it's removing another queue, if you like, to a car user. So it's making them think twice so they will slow down, hopefully, and, and understand the street a bit better. And then the control is done through, you know, the backbone of the whole system, really, is, is quite an engineered element to it. Um, it's got the check dams in it. Each check dam has the sort of relatively level flat base to it. So when the gradient's steeper, the, the check dams are closer to, uh, to create that sort of step in. And when the gradient sort of flows out, it just becomes much more spread out and, uh, and the distance between each check dam is, is much greater. But effectively, every sort of cell is relatively flat bottom, so it rises and falls rather than flows. Um, the planting. Again, going back to the planting, it's a big thing for me, big thing for the city perspective, I suppose, really, on, on things there. But really just thinking about that sort of setting for the environment, it was something we really wanted to work on and work with the university on particularly, uh, just making sure we got the right species composition, making sure it's wet when it needs... Well, it can deal with wet, but more importantly, particularly at the moment with the dry conditions, it needs to be able to deal with severe drought, as we're understanding. We're not watering anything either, so it's... If it dies, it dies, and we understand it, and then we move on. But in, in, in the main, most things are tolerating the conditions we have at the moment. So again, it's really just sort of looking at you know, that meadow-like environment. It's a series of horticultural species, really, which are planted, but gives you that impression of a meadow-like environment, I suppose. And we wanted to try to create planting on each side of the footways, so you've got that feel of movement and meander through something, rather than just something that's alongside of you. So it's more of a journey, if you like. Uh, the planting really extends right through as well. I mean, that's October time and stuff was still, you know, it's billowing away. And you know, even in January when we're cutting things back, it's still stuff is flowering. So we're sort of taking it to the office, big bunches of flowers for everybody and stuff. So, it's, so it is, you know, it's, it, it really is working well, the species composition and mixes we're looking at at the moment. But they're very specific to every site. Even within the site, we've got several different mixes we're looking at and playing with at the moment. And this was taken about four weeks ago, which before it really sort of the drought started to hit. So since then, it doesn't quite look like this anymore. It's a lot browner. But um, in principle, that, you know, that was, that's what it was like just over four weeks ago now. So stuff is really doing well. And then finally, just going back, I suppose, to the, the first point I made about it's about placemaking. So it's not just about the suds. It's about all the different aspects that come together to make a, a great space, if you like, really. Something which really can sort of attract people in and hold people in these spaces, I think is really important for the city and for the use of the areas. It sort of just gives you that identifiably Sheffield element that we sort of, well, I keep banging on about. And it's quite dramatic as well. We've got lots of level changes on the scheme, so it's, you know, it, it creates that drama and the, the concrete jet dams allow for that sort of drama to unfold as well a bit more. 
another sort of late season uh, photograph. And really maintenance has been a big thing for us as well because we've needed to try to sell this to the city a bit and say actually the planting and we, we had to do a lot of like number crunching and things but really the planting is cheaper to maintain over 25 years than the tarmac that's down so we, we have actually got a cost benefit coming back to the city in the fact that you know we, we do have those savings because the maintenance has been done again with the plant species compositions in mind it's sort of all thinking about a species that can tolerate just being cut back once a year and it's very roughly cut back as well it's not sort of trimmed carefully informed it's just sheared or hedge trimmed off and collected all the horizons and, and off it goes really so it, it's been a big part of the the selling point of this is maintenance again because you can uh, most people can create a great space on day one but it's actually making sure that that space is still great in three four five years time really and so we're, we're still sort of experimenting quite a bit in understanding how you know, how it's going to perform into the sort of future years really so <coughs> So really just sort of going back to, to what it was and then sort of what it's become really. <coughs> 